All right, Sagittarius, thanks for tuning in to your December of 2014 horoscope. My name is Athen. Okay, so we've got um, a lot of activity this month in your first house, lots of it. Uh, Pluto's been transiting your first house and uh, for quite some time, and so there's been a lot of changes to your personality, to who you are, what your goals are, what your ambitions are, that sort of thing. And now this month we have the second to last square with Uranus and Pluto taking place, which is a very important aspect because the last one is just final releasing, final lessons learned. The second to the last is applying a tremendous amount of wisdom that we've learned over this aspect towards changing, in this sense, changing your life, changing your goals and your ambitions. So um, very powerful time this month and uh, really stepping into the constructive side of it and being the willing participant in these changes between December and March will be uh, a key emphasis for all of us, especially you guys with this activity in your first house. Now last month there was a strong emphasis on your 12th house and that's still going to be playing a role but very subtly and it's going to be building into the first. But in essence, you're going to have all these fast-moving planets all going over your ascendant at different times. And so you're going to be noticing a shift from the more uh, relaxed, you know, last month it was about going with the flow, perhaps getting the necessary rest that you need in order for this new beginning, this new cycle to uh, come into fruition for you guys. And happy birthday to a lot of you Sagittarians out there as well. But um, last month it's uh, subtle and flowing and resting and now this month things start to get energized as these fast moving planets start to go into your first house. And the first of the planets is Venus which um, goes in on the fifth. So this is an enjoyment of wanting to start these goals. I think you're ready, especially if you've rested. And uh, from the 5th through the 13th, really pay attention to what your goals, what your ambitions are, and how you can bring more of them into your life, how much you enjoy them, because that's providing a very, sprong, uh, very strong inspiration to all of this. And um, especially when the sun goes in there on the 15th, mid-month, that's really when things are going to really start to come into the first house, which is about you. And up until that point for the first half, just enjoy it. Enjoy the process, get your feet wet, look good, maybe you know, go to the salon, you know, get some new clothes, that kind of thing. Watch the spending, but you know, within moderation, and um, enjoy it. Because with all this activity, Venus is going to be showing you something that, well, life is about enjoyment. And you have to enjoy your goals. You have to enjoy the process of life, the steps, in order for you to, <laughs> to, to enjoy your life, which is what the whole purpose is. So uh, pay attention to that because if things do get intense this month, but they don't have to be, but if they are intense, it, it, it lightens things up and helps you see the more you know, meaningful aspect of life. So uh, with Pluto now, these, uh, this square happens right on the 15th when the sun goes into your first house. And then Mercury just, you know, is just going in there around the same time. So in terms of Mercury, you guys are around the middle of the month going to really start to become aware of what those goals and our ambitions are, or at least start to think about them, which is good. You really want to do that this month. Consider what, you're, what you want to achieve, you know, in this cycle. And um, when the sun goes in, that's when the inspiration and all that's really going to start to kick in. Now, it just so happens that on the 15th, that's when the square between Uranus and Pluto goes exact. So you're, we're going to be feeling the energy is the highest for the middle of the month, but I think we're going to feel it for the whole month. And it's the same, the same transformational stuff that's been going on for the past couple of years. Not exactly the same on a mundane level, but the same kind of energy. And in essence, the energy is having to do with you restructuring yourself okay becoming a new person you guys are metamorphosizing with pluto in your first you're you're literally transforming you and you're becoming new you're becoming a new person and it's it's involving your you know it's affecting all areas of your life you know whether it's the home the relationships the work whatever because when you transform you change your resonance you change your frequency and then the external things in your reality have to change to that and so that means you know it's very important for you guys to do a lot of releasing a release to, to wh whichever way your life you think it's going to unfold or would like it to unfold, you can set the intentions. You can have those goals and ambitions without being attached to how it's going to happen, without being attached to that particular outcome. So, um, you know, do that and uh, release because that's essentially what Pluto is really going to be transforming this month. But in terms of this square between Uranus and Pluto, there's been a lot of freedom that, you're, that that's been trying to come out through your feelings, through your emotions. 
Uranus has been transiting your guys' fourth house, and the fourth and the first are started, are, have been squaring up to each other. So what makes this not intense, and again, it doesn't have to be, and I don't see it being if we become the, if we are the willing participant and we go with the flow, um, Uranus and the first house, uh, in the four, from the fourth to the first, is essentially integrating those two energies. So it's realizing how there's this, this you inside, emotional freedom, it's trying to seek expression. It's trying to become enveloped and join union with the outward you, this new you that's in that people see, your parents, the first house, where all these changes are happening and there's some uniting that needs to take place there. Because with Uranus, you know, you have to feel free. If you don't feel free, if you feel stuck or whatever, that's what's causing a lot of this transformational energy, the, the tough stuff, you know, if it's there for you personally. So be willing to just release your feelings, but, but allow yourself to feel whatever you want. Allow yourself to be the, whichever way you want to be. The fourth house is feelings, but really it's just your body. It's your temple. It's your human, your human body. And so Uranus is trying to show you the, that there's this, you got to move around. You got to feel free. You got to be able to do what you want, do what you feel. And when you do that, you're going to find it very supporting to all these transformations. And you're also going to notice that the more you're willing to transform the self, like I was saying, the more it's freeing up your feelings as well. So uniting these two principles, Pluto and Uranus, is the key to this square. And it's involving that, fir that first and that fourth house. Now, on a more mundane level, the fourth house also has to do with home, family, roots, past, that sort of thing. So there's probably some changes going on in those sectors for you, but that's good, you know. Um, as long as you're not making any impulsive decisions uh, in terms of those areas this month, it, it just needs to be constructive, okay? And it needs to be long-term, but constructive in the sense that it's what you truly want and it's something that is important for your transformation. And you'll know what is and you'll know what's not. If it's causing you stress or anxiety or something of that nature, then be willing to put things off with this kind of aspect, okay? But the things that you know you need to transform, mostly to do with yourself, which is such a personal thing. It's not external. It's you. Things you need to change with yourself. Then naturally there won't be any anxiety when you need to make changes because you've already made the switch within yourself, whether it's home related or whatever. You've already made the switch within yourself and then everything will flow naturally in the external environment. So pay attention to that. I think that's what the strong emphasis is for you guys. All right, so on the 15th, that's when the square really goes exact. And uh, then on the 20th, things really start to become more personalized, okay? The fast-moving planets, v Venus, Mercury, and the Sun all go over Pluto from the 20th onward. And so this is when it's like physical, like external more so, with the Venus being relationships, Mercury with your thought patterns, and the Sun with your creativity. So in terms of Venus, uh, first off, uh, from the 20th onward, be willing to just release any attachments that you have to relationships, okay? Or any attachments that you have, the relationship you have with yourself, you know, could be that too. Mercury, release any old ideas, any old notions. Watch how you're communicating. Step into the power of it. You know, let me let me talk on that for a second. Pluto is power, spiritual power, and it has to do with you gaining your spiritual power. This is what this is all about. And uh, seeing, in this sense, the power of the word with Mercury, the power of what you think and what you say is sending out vibes into the universe. And sometimes the things we say, for example, can be very powerful destructively or constructively so the power spiritual power that i'm talking about is not solar plex it's not anything else it's the heart okay it's compassion when you have compassion when you're coming from your heart space then naturally that power all transforms into positive energy compassion for others and it creates obviously harmony and beauty and enjoyment in everybody's life so connect to the heart chakra that's really emphasized with pluto especially when it becomes personal from the 20th onward. Now, uh, later on in the month, the sun's going to go over Pluto, and so that's going to have to do with you guys' creativity changing, so release any attachments that you have to what you're creating or your ability to create. Okay, And you'll notice a great sense of rejuvenation and vitality from this. All right. So that is uh, from, the, from the personal planets. Now, Mars is actually going to be sextiling up to Uranus on the 20th as well, which is, Mars is playing a very benefic role this month. And um, I feel like putting energy into where Mars is this month is going to help unlock that freedom for you guys. And so for you, it's your second house. It's your values. Mars is going to be there all month. 
So attain your values, make those goals, set those plans towards your values. Um, and perhaps, you know, it has to do with on a mundane level finances or resources, but um, focus on your uh, values and achieving them and taking action towards them. Okay, that's going to unlock a tremendous amount of freedom, especially from the 20th onward when uh, Mars sextiles up to Uranus. And that's going to help clear up a lot of emotional stuff, perhaps that's trying to come out this just higher self that's coming out through your feelings. And then on the 21st, Uranus goes station direct, which suggests that there will be a shift in, in that. You will start to feel free, freer. And this all has to do with the amount of uh, work that you've done with this square. So uh, around the 21st, pay attention to how there's this new you, this new inner you that is coming out and being free and allow that freedom to come out. And you're going to notice uh, that's creating uh, just a, a release, an overall release in your life. Okay. Just make sure the release is constructive, like I said. Now, in terms of Jupiter, Jupiter has been transiting your guys' eighth house, and he's going uh, retrograde on the ninth for the next few months. So, with Jupiter there, he's been there for almost a year. You guys have been very optimistic about transformation, which is awesome. You know, you guys understand that there's the, the importance of change and uh, the importance of transformation, the importance of spiritual power. So, continue to tap into that because that's really supporting you guys with all this activity in your first house. See the big picture in that light, how transformation is something that is universal. It's how the universe works. And uh, it's so vitally important to that. And when he goes retrograde, reflect on that from the ninth onward. Think about these things. Think about the change in your life, the importance of change, etc. Now, Saturn has been transiting your guys' 12th house for uh, a month or two, depending on when you're watching this. He went into your 12th early in November. And so you guys are really grounding your spirituality, you know, which is, again, so important. And that's going to be a grounding element for you guys. So presence, flow, meditation, meditation, meaning anything you do that puts you into a meditative state, whether it's meditation itself or hiking or cooking or whatever it is, um, putting that energy into it or just meditating and relaxing and going with the flow is going to help create a grounding element because it's going to be very important for all of us to ground this month. And so for you guys, it's your spiritual sector and it has to do with releasing. So I think there's an extra emphasis on that, which you guys are basically becoming like spiritual masters with Saturn transiting that 12th house. He's going to be there for a long time. So you're learning the process of grounding your spirituality more and realizing the more you ground, the more you're able to be spiritual, the more energy can come down. So uh, do that uh, presence and meditation and stuff. I think you'll find that very helpful. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, full and new moon taking place this month. We've got the full moon on the 6th, and this is happening in Taurus, which is your guys' uh, sixth house. So this has to do with the day-to-day -day activities. Perhaps this is a reminder to see how the day-to-day -day, reality is spiritual, you know, or perhaps how important it is to take care of your health and your body, to sleep right, to eat well, and how that attributes to your spirituality. So whatever it is, and maybe it's a new creation you guys have been working on, or new refinement, or some sort of new health regime you guys have been working on that's really going to cultivate um, around the six. So just pay attention to that and see the tremendous, um, well, there's going to be insight, okay? Just see the insight that's going to come to you in regards to that because it's a sixth house lesson, and the sixth house is essentially showing you that you have control over your life, and that there's spirituality in everything and everyone we meet on the day-to-day -day level everywhere and the importance of your body, your health, and taking care of things on a day-to-day -day level. Now on the 21st, we've got a new moon taking place in your guys' first house this month. It's at the end of the month, so after all these transformations are taking place, there's this sense of newness, new beginnings. This is, you know, new moon in your first house. This is a lot of, like I said, a lot of your guys' birthdays this month, so there's a sense of freshness. It's the beginning of the year too. So really reflect around the 21st what all this transformation has transformed within you. Now Pluto is very psyche. He's not very known. So a lot of this work's been done on the emotional level, on the etheric level, just very behind the scenes. But the more you can reflect, and this is intuitive, it's not so analytical, it's just feeling into it and feeling the changes that took place, you're going to, the more you're going to feel that sense of freshness. And you might even get some more insights too in terms of what new goals you want to set for the future. And actually, this is the perfect time to set goals for the next year when we have a new moon in the first house. Set those intentions in that non-attached way and uh, make those goals for the next year. It's perfect for you guys. 
All right, so I'm going to draw a card and see where Spirit would like a little more emphasis for you this month. Okay, Saturn. All right, well, maybe this is uh, just an emphasis on what I was saying in terms of Saturn. Stay grounded, and it's through spirituality. Notice that Saturn's wearing a white cloak, and he's, uh, he's dressed in purple. And these are all very, these are the, this, the crown chakra. It's the higher dimensional uh, energies. And so Saturn rules the root chakra, but there's, there's, the pull, there's the extreme. There's the whole range, the whole hue of the color spectrum, all the way down to the root, infrared, all the way up to ultraviolet. So see how when there's more of the grounding, it's really helping that hue and that range. And then within that range, you really have that sense of mastery. You know, that sense of control of your life, control of your spirituality, control over the day-to-day -day things, that kind of thing. It's just to control over yourself, your spiritual self. That's what a spiritual master is. And tap into your experience in terms of what you've learned about spirituality, you know, over, over your whole lifetime and how that is, uh, you know, what you're building upon. You know, everything we've learned from the past, you know, Simon's got the white beard. He's, that's experience. He's learned through experience. And, uh, learn from that and build upon that one step at a time. Just want to let you guys know that I'm offering a special this month. It's a 45 minute recorded reading gift you can give to a friend or family member. And of course you guys already get 50% off my one hour sessions which you can also extend and it's a great way to look at the year ahead. All right, well I hope you guys have a great month and I'll see you next time. Take care.